Welcome aboard, everyone, to our early spring camping trip, very early spring camping trip. We wanted to get out there and get a good start to the flying season. We spent way too much time working last summer, working, building runways, building cabins, doing all sorts of stuff up here at the Flight My Couple Pilot Lodge. We wanted to make sure this summer we got in a little bit more time for some fun flying. We figured there's no better way to start the flying season off by dusting off the 180, taking the last little bits of snow off of it that had been sitting all winter, and give it a nice flight, about an hour long flight to get out somewhere fun like Hitchinbrook to go camping and the Hook Point Cabin on Hitchinbrook Island is a super cool place and accessible in April because although most of the places here in Alaska are still covered in snow in April, obviously the beaches stay clear from that nice 38 degree water crashing up on the beach, keeping the beaches clear and the landing area, landing zone, not runway, but landing place on Hitchinbrook to get access to the Hook Point Cabin is right on the beach there. So we figured, hey, let's go ahead and hop in the 180, head out to the east, and get a little exploring in, a little flying in, and bring you guys along for the ride. Hold on tight, it's gonna be a little bumpy. With all the power in the 180, we were able to bust up through some holes, climb up over the mountains, and the winds were pretty cooperative for us, just about 10 knots over the mountains there, 10 knots winds aloft, so a nice smooth ride over the mountains there, rising up to over 10,000 feet. So these mountains act like a huge barrier for all the moisture coming in off the Pacific Ocean and create these incredible glaciers, tons of snowfall on these mountains all the time. Getting the 180 up to over 9,000 feet, we're able to throttle it back a bit, lean it out. 12 gallons an hour really isn't bad when you consider the speed that you're actually traveling at once you get up there. Super beautiful day for it. Just got incredibly lucky with weather. This particular passage coming through Whittier out over Prince William Sound over to the Pacific Ocean side uh, is not always this cooperative. It oftentimes is a lot, uh, a lot of moisture, a lot of low visibility, a lot of clouds just generally socked in with kind of marginal VFR or IMC conditions. So super lucky that this worked out for us. There's our landing site right over there. And as we pulled up alongside it, kind of entered a big wide downwind, specking it out, made a few passes. We'll edit those out just for time here and then came on in. Of course, you do have to make several passes to really fully identify what is going on with the sand, the moisture content, is it hard, is it soft? Where can you land? Where is it going to be safe to set the airplane down and park it? and make sure it's not going to sink or flip over when you touch down. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. 
Welcome everyone to the Hook Point A-Frame Cabin in the Chugach National Forest here at uh, Hook Point on Hitchinbrook Island in Alaska. Beautiful A-Frame Cabin, wonderful Airbnb, sleeps eight, just this super picturesque naturey area that we're in, wonderful spot. Let's go in and take a look. Uh, did you get the key? It's third minute. Here we go. As you walk into your deluxe A-frame Airbnb here, we have this awesome, amazing queen-size bed. Uh, super comfortable, complete with uh, just super thin sleeping pad. This is some of the best super thin sleeping pads you can find anywhere. Uh, you may want to bring your own air mattress. There's hooks for your coats and all these other things, little clothes pins that you can uh, clip things up, hang your, uh, hang your dogs up there or something. Fire extinguisher for those of you who don't know how to work a wood stove. And uh, paper towel for those of you who know how to start one. It even has shelving in here, complete with some cooking utensils, pots and pans, uh, vintage 1970s grease on this one. It's really well seasoned. It tastes fantastic. There's cooking foil for you. There's actually a wood stove repair foil, two very different types of foil you should know uh, to help repair the uh, wood stove and seal it up there. And other things like mugs, um, you know, with a little bit of tree sap in there for extra flavor, just kind of spice up the coffee in the morning. This is kind of your coffee station right here with a little tea kettle you can heat up on the wood stove. There's of course the standard McCormick, can't, uh, can't go without that. Some uh, matches that are uh, empty, a pen that doesn't work, a uh, little uh, makeup station here to put your lips on in the morning, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, then uh, a stick of herpes, uh, for those of you who uh, want to put that on your lips. And uh, some toilet paper, some TP. Oh, and also in case you forgot your hollow point uh, rounds for your rifle, they've uh, got two of them here provided for you. So really amazing amenities in this Airbnb. Uh, kindling for the wood stove that's already cut up. Uh, kind of little broom thing here for, for all the dirt you track in because wood stoves are, are dirty. Uh, and then, of course, this amazing, uh, super uh, over-fired, kind of warped wood stove that uh, is really nice and cozy and makes the whole space feel really warm and inviting uh, once you get it fired up. And then, of course, for those of you who uh, are too lazy to work a wood stove, they have this oil stove here as well. So you can go totally renewable energy on this cabin or uh, sort of kind of renewable energy if you so choose. There's a tank out back uh, that you can turn on and then adjust the heat to your liking. And of course, this is all uh, OSHA EPA approved tape to uh, seal up the stove pipe there so you don't get any of that uh, you get a little bit of tape smell kind of in here. And then of course there's these really super modern, uh, kind of almost futuristic blocks of wood that uh, can be burned in the wood stove. And they're stacked up in this nice, neat little piles for your convenience. There's uh, more tape if you'd like to seal up any of the other leaks in the stove pipes, uh, or perhaps you just like the aroma coming in the cabin and, and want to kind of bask in that. And then of course, for those of you arriving in the uh, busier season, uh, starting in early June through uh, late August, 40% uh, DEET uh, for those of you who are from the lower 48 and for any local Alaskans, I think there's some 100% DEET here as well. Um, oh, and then of course, uh, you know, just some other empty you know, shelves lying around too in case you, you have a use for that or something. There's also a guest book, super cool idea to see what people have written here, other people that have visited the cabin, uh, dating all the way back to 1996. Um, basically just a lot of um, tons of sun, no deer, um, was here for two weeks, didn't see a single deer, um, deer tracks all over the place, didn't see a single deer, tried to shoot a deer, couldn't find any deer. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of that beautiful TNG, uh, wood here on the walls and, uh, really nice, um, propane light with literally a burnt out light bulb. I mean, if you were wondering where the term light bulb being burnt out comes from, it's actually this right here where it's physically burned off of the lamp. Uh, really cool little chair here, little kind of rocking chair. Don't think you're supposed to rock in it, but you could if you so choose. And coming over here is your kitchen table with this really uh, plush 1990s 
tablecloth, super fancy. And then uh, you can even see how modern they went with these square bolts on the uh, kitchen table here rather than the, the six-sided ones. Those are for poor people. So they went with the fancy six-sided ones there. And then you have your other little kind of sleeping bed thing here with a, a little bit comfier mat, a little bit more cushion. And there's also some Pomeranians that occasionally come visit. Come here, buddy. And if that was not enough, it gets even better. There's a whole other level to this A-frame. Whole nother level. We're gonna go check it out. Up here, there is another nice sleeping mat that uh, smells like your grandmother's house, really uh, for those nostalgic evenings. A uh, little bit of graffiti up here as well from the visitors. But you could easily stuff at least another probably six to eight people, maybe 25 people by Airbnb standards up here in the loft. And this cabin, really cool. It has its own pure water filtration system. When you come down here, if you turn on the stove and breathe all night in here, in the morning when it's cool outside, you'll get some dew on the plexiglass windows that you can just uh, kind of sample there. Makes a nice little puddle there down at the bottom. Some other great amenities in this Airbnb include size nine sandals, um, puzzles, and uh, even books. Um, the only problem is we uh, try to tell uh, the host about this. I didn't have a way to get the book onto my phone so I could actually read it onto my Kindle app. So I'm not really sure what to do with these. Being a millennial, um, I mean, in school, they just, we put them on here and we read them. Uh, but I don't know what you do with the actual book itself, what these are for. So I guess we'll just leave them there along with the sandals. But tons of other great amenities also outside. Let's go take a look. You have your very own amazing kind of moldy sort of rustic wood shed here, sort of tool shed with rusty axes of different types, um, big chunks of heavy duty steel, some broken glass, uh, old fuel cans, uh, rusty torn camp chairs, and uh, some really dull rusty saws if you want to go ahead and cut up some of your own firewood here. Uh, but overall, just really incredible. There's lots of rope that is actually all locally sourced rope um, right here from the beach that washes up from all the fishing trawlers and all the other boats out there that basically just dump the stuff over the side of their boats. So all this rope actually 100% local organic sourced uh, polypropylene rope. And then of course, if you forgot your boots, there are some uh, complimentary boots included as well. Just please make sure you put them back just as dirty as you find them. Of course, there is an outdoor kitchen right over here by your fire pit so you can cook outside here with this incredible view. I mean, absolutely multi-million dollar view in these hammocks. Again, 100% natural, organic, locally sourced hammocks found just washed up on the beach here with other kind of wooden metal debris and buoys from the local fishing fleet. And then of course you have your private bridge that leads out to your private runway. It was an organically built bridge by our local beaver population. Even the beavers have contributed to this all organic Airbnb here in the Chugach National Forest. Overall, just an amazing experience, super tranquil, peaceful night, with the white noise of the ocean, super naturey scenery all around at the Hook Point A-Frame Airbnb. Would highly recommend Hey John, here. this is not an Airbnb. Well, what do you mean it's not an Airbnb? No, we, you're just jealous of all those Airbnb tour videos on YouTube, so you wanted to make your own. Good. Really? <laughs> we booked this on recreation.gov from the Forest Service. But, but, so, well, I guess it's not an Airbnb. It's actually a forestry service cabin. You can book it on recreation.gov. Uh, you will not be driving here. You'll probably not even be taking a boat here. You'll be coming here by aircraft. And it is actually totally not listed anywhere on Airbnb. That is correct. Uh, but I would stand by my ranking of 12 out of five stars because although this was kind of satirical, it is a super amazing place. And these cabins that they have available throughout Alaska from the Forest Service, from BLM, from the National Park Service are just epic. They are in multi-million dollar view locations. There's no one else around, nothing else around. Super cool places. And generally they are only accessible by aircraft. And so if you guys are looking to experience this and you don't have your own airplane because, well, not everyone does, 
that's where we come in. So if you are at all interested in coming here to the Hook Point A-Frame Cabin or any of the other amazing places in Alaska, in the Wrangles, Denali National Park, Lake Clark National Park, Katmai, etc., then go to greatalaskanairtours.com. The link is in the description below. Give us a call. Numbers in the description below as well. You can phone us anytime and arrange for us to fly you out to one of these locations. We are now offering Part 135 charter service right out of Anchorage and Wasilla, Alaska to any of these locations. Super incredible places. Absolutely recommend coming out here for a few days. We'll fly you out here, drop you off, give you all the gear that you need to be self-sufficient out here for a few days and then come pick you up. Really epic place and uh, well you could probably sleep eight people here. I would recommend it more for two to four and uh, obviously our airplanes that we have we uh, run a Cessna 206 that is six seats and then you have the pilot so five seats left over and we are always somewhat weight conscious landing on beaches. There is no runway here. We do land out on the beach so if you guys are looking to visit a location like this with two to four people that is really something that we'd be happy to help you out with. Definitely give us a call if you have any questions at all about visiting Alaska, seeing places like this that really yeah, it's it's pretty rare to actually even get out here. Not many people that even own aircraft get out here, let alone people coming to visit from the lower 48. So would highly recommend you experiencing it. Definitely give us a call. And thank you so much for following along on this tour video with us. As always guys, if you cannot fly every day, then fly 8 and we will see you guys in the next Airbnb tour video. Now, not to get all preachy or be a downer or anything like that, but it is worth mentioning that just before we left here, we went ahead and walked around the beach a little bit picking up garbage. It's really important that every time we go out to these places, we always bring a couple garbage bags with us, and since we burn a lot of fuel going there, we can take a lot of weight back with us. Plastic doesn't weigh a whole lot. The sad part is we only walked about 100, maybe 150 feet from the airplane to fill up several garbage bags until the airplane was totally full of all this stuff. And what you'll notice is the vast majority of it is just bottle caps and plastic bottles. Of course, there's a lot of fishing gear and fishing rope and stuff out here too, and buoys. Some of those can actually be reused, which is cool. But the sheer amount of plastic water bottles really makes you just kind of think like, hey, maybe next time I need water, I won't buy a plastic water bottle. And I'm not saying that you're the one that's gonna throw this into the ocean, but somehow or another, some way or another, all this plastic is making its way out here. This isn't from people coming here to hang out on the beach, having a big party and then leaving their garbage behind. This is all stuff most likely coming off of boats and from beaches of California and other cities that makes its way all the way up here. Steph said she needed a piece of rope to drag the buoy. And how messed up is it that you only have to walk about like 20 feet and be like, oh yeah, I got a piece of rope for you right here. There you go. Like, we're in the middle of nowhere, yet there's an ample supply of garbage. Now, I really don't consider myself to be some sort of hippie liberal environmentalist. In fact, quite the opposite, really. But I do enjoy eating a lot of fresh fish that we catch up here, and I would hate for this to be all part of the food chain that they're eating too and that I'm eating. So, for the sake of really us and our kids and grandkids and all that, it does make you really think that we survived thousands of years without having plastics on this planet. Although, it makes you wonder if we're going to survive another five or ten thousand years if our beaches all look like this.